Good morning, St. Andrews. Welcome. Well, this morning we've got a song for you, My Sweet Lord, and it really can bring your heart closer to God. Ready?
majority of everyone that you're watching from uh, New York State and others in the Zoom app, uh, please do uh, click the comment section to leave a hello. We'd also love to hear from you as well. Um, good morning to everyone here. We are so glad that you are here as well. Um, so this is the day when the Lord has made. We are looking for joy in our lives. Let's all stand, share with us a song about joy and about the day. My message this morning is about Jesus conquering the world. So please feel that presence as I read this morning. Thank you. 
And now we will be passing the peace of Christ, but we will be staying in place. We will be waving. We can pass our love to each other. We can break the peace. But please be safe. Testing. Those on Facebook, can you tell me if you can hear me right now? If somebody out there can just quickly text that, because I'm seeing that we're having trouble hearing. Now we just have to wait in anticipation if somebody <laughs> quickly <laughs> does a, and then we're going to get like 10 con con they're like comments probably. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Okay. So you got to hold it. You have to hold the mic really close and be nice and loud. About, so Joe, uh, all right, so we're getting some people saying it's soft, some people saying we can hear. All right, so we're gonna try our hardest, just bear with us. Um, we're gonna try to be as loud as we can. Those in the house, just lower your hearing aids. <laughs> all right, all right, so nice and loud, Betty, right up against your mouth. Good morning, St. Andrews. <laughs> Good morning at home. So in life of the church, Tomorrow evening, we are starting confirmation class. It will be Zoom from 6.30 to 7.30. If you are interested in joining, please contact me. Um, also, this coming Saturday, which should be January 15th, we have the men's breakfast at 8 o'clock. And at 9 o'clock, while we have, still have all the men here, this works out really well, we're taking down all the Christmas decorations. So please come in and join us. That's always actually a good time of fellowship. Another thing I'd like to point out, the conference is having a, a book club, a book group, and they are starting this Wednesday, and it's called Being the Church in a Post-Pandemic World. I've already started reading it. It is a good read, um, very helpful for St. Andrew, so if you'd like to join it, uh, you can find it on the conference website, or if you want to email me and I can send you where to sign up for it. Um, and I think... That is it. So from that, we will go into recognition of service and ministry. And I would say, I would say, look to the back to the three wise men standing in the booth. <laughs> Again, I am with thankfulness for the techie people because I am not. And we are so very grateful. Um, and now we will continue with, and also Anne, where's Anne? Anne is techie, wave your hand in. And Gary's another techie one, so wave your hand, Gary. Now we will continue with joys and concerns and prayers of the people, and Pastor Dave will be leading us in that, and he will be leading us in the pastoral prayer. Thanks. All right, so there's only a few of us here, but and I'm kind of watching Facebook at the same time. Um, anybody want to just shout out a prayer? Actually, let's do a joy first. Go ahead. I passed my test that I took, one of the two that I have to take. Um, and then we are starting Youth Orchestra Bucks County again today. And the pieces that Emily is playing for that are about 45 minutes in total long, but there's some fabulous pieces. Excellent. So passing test in Youth Orchestra. Other joys? Anybody on Facebook has some joys you want to share? Just put them out there. I'm kind of watching. I'll um, monitor as best I can. Oh, I got to join in the back with Carolyn. Um, well, anyway, got it. Um, we're celebrating birthdays tonight. And her husband. 
husband, Anne, her husband, Ken, and my grandson, Owen, all have birthdays, the 4th, the 8th, and the 10th. So wow. everybody. Yeah. How do they all turn 21 at the same time? I don't know, because I just got It's there. a miracle. <laughs> Everyone's still 21, I know. Excellent. So for birthdays, excellent. Any other joys? You have a joy? Uh, Ken and I will be leaving this afternoon at 2 o'clock to uh, get our ship at, uh, in Bayonne, New Jersey, and we're going to be on an 11-day cruise. I'll miss you next week, but uh, we'll be cruising the Caribbean. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great joy to have time away with family. Um, Joe, Mar Joe Marie is saying that um, had Christmas with daughter and family, relaxing and joyful, praise God, excellent. Any other joys? Oh, being able to watch worship. Yeah, thank you. She, so Sue. Oh, yes. Hi. <laughs> yes, I saw that. I didn't really think about that. Yeah. So we have uh, somebody who knows Betty and I. Sue is watching from afar on Facebook with us. So glad you're here, Sue, and everyone that's watching with us. Other joys. Let's do some concerns. What are some concerns? I know I have one here because of COVID. There is uh, the Horsham Center for Jewish Life has COVID and has hit the long-term care residents. So prayers for them. Other concerns? Right up front here, right behind you. So last night, my dad um, slid out of his wheelchair oh and gosh. I managed to be able to get him up, but he has very thin skin. So in the process, I like made three oh. huge open wounds. So just oh. prayers that I'll be able to get them to heal. Yeah, oh, I'm so sorry, so sorry. <laughs> Um, prayers as Izzy continues to heal from having four teeth extracted. And then I could do with some prayers um, from marching band, the fighting with the scenery and everything else. I've injured my knee, oh, and they think it might be an MCL. So I'm hoping that we can avoid anything extra. Oh, my gosh, yes. Prayer. I, I can hear it in your singing voice, Izzy. I can hear it in your singing voice, those teeth that are gone. There's like a slight whistle that happens now. Yeah, we could pick it up. It was easy to pick up. Yeah. <laughs> Can I go back to a joy? Yeah. Yesterday, I got to take my two grandsons to the same hill that I had taken my sons to, to snow tube. So that was amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Any other concerns? Anything else on Facebook I'm missing? Hopefully not. So let us just pray, and um, on Facebook, just keep putting your prayer requests out, because we'll pray for them throughout the week. But let us pray. And as we come to this time of centering ourselves to experience the Holy Spirit, to experience who Jesus is, born as a baby, died as a criminal, but yet lives on, as a God of love and healing, and the one that sustains, comforts, and redeems. Let us take a moment of just breathing in. As you breathe in, breathe in that power that created. Breathe in that source of life, of who God is. And when we breathe out, breathe out all those worries and anxieties you carry with you. And as we go to that cave where Jesus was born, that little baby sitting there, the event that changed the world forever, we give praise and thanks just like those people from the East that traveled for years to get to Jesus, to give gifts of praise and thanks. So, oh God, we come to you first with joys, joys and happinesses of our lives of those areas in which smiles abound, celebrations occur. We give you thanks for we know blessings flow from you first. And in those blessings, we see your love and care and grace for each of us. But oh God, we walk with you from that cave in which you were born to that cross in which you were killed. And as we kneel at that foot of the cross, knowing that the life from your body has been taken, knowing that you will live on. We come to you with our concerns, concerns for safety, 
concerns for your healing hand to work, concerns for this virus to be eradicated, for illnesses to dissipate, for those in care situations having the healing they need. So, oh God, wherever physical healing is needed this morning, we give you thanks for the healing that has occurred, is occurring, and will occur. And, oh God, we ask that healing occurs in all ways, shapes, and forms. In your mighty name of Jesus, let healing occur. Where we need healing emotionally and mentally, let that occur also, O oh God. We live in a world of anguish, of violence, of disparity, of injustice, that in those places of darkness, we sometimes don't see your light. So let your healing light show up. Let each of us experience you in ways we've yet to experience you. Let each of us know who you are. Oh God, wherever those areas of our hearts that we have anger, we have hate, we have shame or guilt, or there's other emotions that just make us feel worthless or less than, work within us today. Speak to us in ways that let us hear you, see you, and experience you, oh God, in mighty ways. We pray for all of our community in whatever way they need to feel your presence. Let your presence be made known. We pray for those that struggle with homelessness, addiction, abuse, trauma, that in those spaces of the unknown, in those spaces of darkness, in those spaces in which it seems that the abuse will never end, that somehow your light shines, that somehow in you we are saved. We are redeemed and we are sustained and created anew. We pray for this church and where we have this church go. For you know when we get out of the way and let you lead, incredible things occur. So, oh God, we are in the middle of growing pains. And in those growing moments, let us experience you and the miracles you have for us. Let us just release those worries and concerns we have and let you take over. But, oh God, use each of us as instruments of who you are to make peace and unity in a world that so desperately needs it. So together, oh God, here in this place and near and in the places where everyone's at at home, let us share the same words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now that we have prayed in faith, let us affirm our suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Gospel Rose will be singing Blessed Like You. And of course that means more like our Creator and more like Jesus. Get it right. 
Where I talk a talk that I don't walk And miss the moments right before my eyes Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped Somebody with a hand that I could have held But I just can't see past myself Lord, help me be a little more like mercy A little more like grace
because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your world, word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I don't belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them to the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also might be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. In them and you and me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Dawn. That was a lot. So here we are in John 17. How many of you, I'm just going to try to go off script here a little bit. How many of you are comfortable with just looking up and speaking to God about everything and anything? Raise your hand. That is awesome. That is awesome. So in John 17, Jesus is speaking to God directly. So after Jesus had spoken these words that John just read, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son. <laughs> Yes, in our scripture this morning, sorry about that. In our scripture this morning, we hear Jesus praying to God in heaven. This is just prior to Jesus being arrested. He knows what is coming, and he knows that he will be leaving. It was customary for the Jewish people then to pray a farewell prayer if they knew they were leaving. Jesus looked up to heaven. To where God was and still is, sitting on 
in hell. Jesus would have been looking forward to being in heaven again with God. As a human, he would have been serious, concerned, and ever so brave and courageous, knowing the brutality that he would soon go through. He was determined to do God's will. Thirdly, he would also be concerned about those he was leaving behind. Jesus taught all he could to his disciples. He would now be going away, and they would need to carry on the work. He was concerned for their safety. Jesus prayed to God, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy God, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. And he continued on, I have given them your word, and the world has gained them, because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them. Jesus cannot take them out of this world because they need to spread the good news just as all of us do today. Jesus was praying for the disciples and for us today for protection as they and we follow the Great Commission. He does not want the influence of the world to harm them. In Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus had spent three years with his disciples. He had been the shepherd and they his flock. He has come to know them, care for them, and love them. When a parent goes away and leaves their child with someone, they will give instructions to ensure their well-being. The same would be true if you were staying and they were leaving. What do you do when you are trusting your loved ones with others? From the anecdotes and illustrations of D.L. Moody, D.L. Moody used to tell the story of a man who came to him and said, When the Mexican War began, I wanted to enlist. My mother, seeing I was resolved, said if I became a Christian, I might go. She pleaded and she prayed that I might become a Christian, but I wouldn't. I said, when the war was over, I would become a Christian, but not until then. All her pleading was in vain, and at last, when I was going away, she took out a watch and said, My son, your father left this to me when he died. Take it. And I want you to remember that every day at 12 o'clock noon, your mother will be praying for you. Then she gave me her Bible and marked out passages and put a few different references in the slide. I took the watch and the Bible just because my mother gave them. I never intended to read the Bible. I went off to Mexico and one day, while on a long, weary march, I took out my watch and it was 12 o'clock. I had been gone for months, but I remember that my mother at that hour was praying for me. Something prompted me to ask the officer to relieve me for a little while, and I stepped behind the tree away out on the plains of Mexico and cried to the God of my mother who saved me. Well, God saved him. And after the Mexican War was ended, he said, I have enlisted again to see if I can do any good for my master's cause. With her son leaving, this mother sent him with the protection that she had to offer. 
daily prayer, and her Bible, and God saved him. The son being so thankful went on to offer his services to the master's cause. It went full circle. Think of the child going off to college for the first time. How many instructions and words of wisdom do we give before they leave? With cell phones, we have the opportunity to stay connected and continue to give words of advice for perfection. Now, I'm not sure how much teenagers appreciate that, but we have always had the opportunity to pray to God for protection of our loved ones that we will be away from for a time, even for protection of parents. Praying daily or multiple times a day is perseverance in prayer, and it is perseverance in love. And today in the words, June 29, 1992, it was written, early African converts to Christianity were earnest and regular in time of devotion. Each one reportedly was a separate spot in the thicket, where he would pour out his heart to God. Over time, the paths to these places became well worn. As a result, if one of these believers began to neglect prayer, it was soon apparent to others. And they would kindly remind the negligent one, Brother, the grass grows on your path. In reading the Gospels, I don't see where Jesus neglected praying to God in heaven. He communicated often, keeping their relationship a priority. Jesus goes on to pray for all believers. My prayer is not for the disciples and believers alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that they share to others, that all of them may be one in complete unity. God, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you, God, have sent me Jesus and have loved them even as you have loved me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them also and that I may be in them. Jesus is clearly sharing the bond of love that God and Jesus have and how they are intimately connected. When Jesus started to pray, he looked up to heaven. He prayed out loud, as was the custom then, and there is a multitude of times in the Bible that Jesus prays to God alone, quietly off to the side. He prays so much to God that the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Jesus has a relationship with God that has complete open communication. He reaches out to God whenever he needs to, and he does not hesitate. Jesus also has a relationship with his disciples, with each of us. He calls us his brothers and sisters. This illustration is adapted from the Rescue Journal. A man was walking down the streets of a city, and he was greatly interested in the children, many of whom were carrying smaller children on their backs and managing at the same time to play their games, says a writer in the Youth's Companion. It is too bad, the man sympathetically said to one little fellow, that you have to carry such a burden. He's no burden, came the quick reply. He's my brother. Well, you are, a shiver you are chivalrous to say so, said the man, and he gave the boy some money. When the man reached home, he said to his family, a little boy has taught me the fullest meaning of the words. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. He recounted his interview and added, if a little boy can carry and care for his brother and refuse to consider him as a burden, surely we ought not to think it a burden to carry our little brothers, the weak 
and the needy ones who look for, to us for help. Let us rejoice as we carry one and say by our actions, he's no burden, he's my brother, he's my sister, he's my sibling. Jesus was communicating this each time he helped someone. Jesus was building relationships and showing us how to do the same. He continues this by praying to God for all believers for their well-being. The, the scripture that was read this morning was actually two prayers. The first one was for his disciples, and the second one was for all believers, believers that are believing then and believers that will come to believe. So in the second prayer about all believers, those who believe and those who will come to believe, Jesus asked for unity between all believers and believers and God and Jesus. In the book, The Pursuit of God, A.W. Tozer wrote, has it ever occurred to you that 100 pianos all tuned to the same fork are automatically tuned to each other? They are of one accord being tuned, not to each other, but to another standard to which each one must individually bow. So 100 worshipers meeting together, each one looking away to Christ, are in heart nearer to each other than they could possibly be, were they to become unity conscious and turn their eyes away from God to strive for closer fellowship. Unity. What do all believers have in common? We look to Jesus. We pray to God in Jesus' name. We have had all of our sins removed by our Savior, Jesus Christ. We read scripture written by man, inspired by the Holy Spirit. We worship and praise our almighty God. We give thanks for all that God has given us. In John 17, we hear the holy of holiest prayers. Our Savior praying to our almighty God, and it's recorded for us to read it. Of the triune God, we hear the Son, Jesus, praying to the Godhead. I've heard multiple times people ask, if you could talk to anyone, who would it be? I don't know what your answer would be, but I never have just one name. I have never been asked, though, if I could go back and witness something, what would it be? My answer to that would be the baptism of Christ. There are no photos. There are no videos. It is recorded in scripture alone. Picture yourself standing by the Jordan River. Jesus asked John to baptize him, and he does. Afterwards, when Jesus comes up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. Then God's voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. That is what I would go see. Almighty God, our Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God together, their relationship in unity, their communication in, in tune, their love together shown for each other, the triune God together, Sacred, sacred, sacred. Holy, holy, holy. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is a priority. Jesus prays to the Almighty God for us, for our protection, for our unity, for our love for one another. What do we do in this relationship for Jesus? You know, in here in Zion Hall, I often I look up at the cross. Look at the cross. Lean on Jesus. Do not fall prey to worldly temptations. Love one another. You all have something in common. You love Jesus. Be in unity with Jesus. Pray. Hold Jesus in your heart as Jesus holds you in his heart. You are the brothers the sisters, 
the siblings of Jesus. What will you pray for today and this week for your siblings in Jesus? Amen. It's a quick login one time if you haven't done so already. And then just submit your gifts that way and it will be recorded. Thank you. Almighty God, we thank you for your constant protection. We thank you for the love that you share to each of us. And in these tithes and offerings, please, please accept them. Please accept our presence. Please accept all that we try to do for you in service for your kingdom and for your will. Please use these tithes and offerings and our service and our gifts to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus is the rock that we stand on. We know he is more sturdy and more reliable than just about anything there is. And that knowledge should give us immense joy. I can see the clouds rolling I can feel the winds They try to shake me I will not be moved My feet are on the rock I can feel the waters rise I can hear the howling lies that haunt me Fear won't hold me now, my feet are on the rock. When I feel my hope about to break, I will be to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. the morning light, I can feel the joy on the horizon, here my faith is found, I stand on solid ground, when I feel my hope about to break, I will be to your unchanging grace, let the waters come and the earth My feet are on. 
to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Of course. Amen. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. My feet are on the rock. My feet are on the rock. 